for being here. Let us pray. Oh God, we ask that you look upon this city of Cape Girardeau and, and you uh, seek out what is broken here, here and that you place your healing hand upon it and make it well. Lord, we ask that you bless those who protect us, our police officers, our firefighters, EMTs, Lord, allow them to make good, quick decisions that uh, serve you. And in what they do, we ask that you temper their act actions with your compassion. Finally, Lord, we ask that you be with this council. Help them to be leaders who strive to work hard so that everyone here may uh, live in peace and at prosperity. And we pray this in your holy name. Amen. I'll call to order this session of the Cape Girardeau City Council. This is our May 2nd, 2016 meeting. Thank you all for being here. Roll call, please. Wayne Bowen. Here. Bob Cox. Here. Robbie Gard. Here. Victor Gunn. Here. Shelley Moore. Here. Perry Rediger. Here. Joseph Rosero. Here. Okay. Need a, uh, a motion on the adoption of the agenda and council, as we discussed in our uh, session, uh, that needs to be an amended motion to remove item seven from the consent agenda. If I could have a motion. So moved, so moved by Zero. Second. And seconded by Guard. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? have three presentations this evening. Number one, uh, building safety. Number two, historic preservation month. I see people out here and also local government week. So first, building safety. Um, Alex and I think Brian Schaefer's here. Chief, you want to come down? I'll let Brian in. All right. Delegation at its best. Building safety month. We're in Cape Girardeau's continuing efforts to address the critical issues of safety, energy efficiency, water conservation, and resilience in the built environment that affects our citizens both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster. They give us confidence that our structures are safe and sound. <clears throat> and whereas our confidence is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians, building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, laborers, and others in the construction industry who work year-round to ensure the safe construction of buildings. And whereas these guardians dedicated members of the International Code Council use a governmental consensus process that brings together local, state, and federal officials with expertise in the built environment to create and implement the highest quality codes to protect Americans in the buildings where we live, learn, work, worship, and play. Whereas the International Codes, the most widely adopted building safety, energy, and fire prevention codes in the nation, are used in most U.S. cities, counties, and states. These modern building codes also include safeguards to protect the public from natural disasters such as snowstorms, tornadoes, floods, and earthquakes. And whereas Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown guardians of public safety, our local code officials, who assure us safe, efficient, and livable buildings. And whereas resilient communities start with building codes, the theme for Building Safety Month 2016 encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance 
of building safe and resilient construction, fire prevention, disaster mitigation, water safety and conservation, energy efficiency, and new technology in the construction industry. Building Safety Month 2016 encourages appropriate steps everyone can take to ensure the places will live, learn, work, worship, and play are safe and sustainable and recognizes that countless lives have been saved due to the implementation of safety codes by local and state agencies. And whereas each year, in observance of Building Safety Month, Americans are asked to consider projects to improve building safety and sustainability at home and in the community, and to acknowledge the essential service provided by all of us to local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and federal agencies protecting lives and property. Now, therefore, be it resolved by Harry Rediger, Mayor of City of Cape Girardeau, do hereby proclaim the entire month of May 2016 as Building Safety Month and encourage citizens to join in the community and participating in Building Safety Month activities. So, congratulations, thank you, and thank you yeah. for your work, Alex. You know, it, it, it is just not always that people come in and say, I love to meet those cousins. I just love to meet those cousins. But to be diligent and resilient in making our codes work for us, the citizens, means so much to you. So Alex, to you and your team, Brian, to you and your team, and everybody, I thank you for all the work you do. Okay? Thank you. Now we'll switch to old buildings. Who are you bringing with you? Come on up. You just had a Dyson, uh, I don't know what Wayne talked about, at our historic preservation dinner. Uh, and, and now we're right here for National Historic Preservation Month. Um, means so much to us. And not only means much to us, but we've done so much uh, at this point. And it's through uh, the efforts of uh, the people that stand by me that have made those kinds of things, kinds of things happen. So, whereas historic preservation endeavors to protect, conserve, and preserve buildings, places, and other artifacts of historical significance for the benefit of present and future generations. And whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for maintaining growth and sustainable development, revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability. And whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for all Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and ethnic backgrounds. And whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as people. Whereas 2016 marks the 50th anniversary of the National Historic Preservation Act, which established the legal framework and incentives for the documentation and preservation of historic buildings, places, and other artifacts. And whereas Cape Girardeau is hosting the National Historic Preservations Commission Annual Preservation Walk and Celebration on Friday, May 13, 2016, in honor of National Historic Preservation Month and the 50th anniversary of the National Historic Preservation Act. Now, therefore, be resolved that I, Harry Rediger, Mayor of City of Cape Girardeau, do hereby proclaim the entire month of May 2016 as National Historic Preservation Month and call on citizens of our community to join communities across the nation in recognizing and participating in this special observance. Thank you for all you do and will do in the future. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. Any words of wisdom here? Um, I just wanted to thank um, you, Harry, and the rest of City Council for um, declaring May Start Preservation Month. Um, and just know that um, we are doing all that we can do on the commission um, to help ensure that the community knows how important place and historic preservation is.
in the bedrock of our political system and a testimony to liberty, freedom, and the right to elected self-government. Whereas citizens of Missouri rely upon local governments to deliver essential community services such as clean water, police, and fire protection. And whereas the continued success of our local governments in meeting the needs of our citizens is a key element in maintaining the overall quality of life in Missouri. And whereas the rich tapestry of local governments in Missouri is represented by thousands of hard working citizen officials, many of whom serve without comp compensation or little. Whereas through education and awareness, the importance of local governments can be communicated to citizens, state legislators, and the news media. Whereas recognition of local governments as accomplishments will give Cape Girardeau residents a better understanding of how essential local services are provided. And whereas uh, uh, establishing a local government week would focus attention on the need for strong, independent, and active local government in this state, recognize value co contributions made by the residents serving their communities in public office. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Harry Rediger, Mayor of the City of Cape Grotto, do hereby proclaim this week, May 6, 2-6, to 2016, as Local Government Week. So, Scott, thank you. This is our week. You bet. <laughs> well, my, my comment is uh, uh, a lot of times I, it, when I'm out and about and, and have been talking about different issues, uh, the police chief will say, you know, I came to this, this community and it's the finest police force I've ever had a chance to be a part of. Our fire chief says the same thing. Our public works director says the same thing. Our parks and rec director says the same thing. And these are folks that have been to a lot of different places. And they point to right where you live and say this is the finest that they've ever been around. And I can just tell you that I echo that 10 times because it is, in fact, that. I think tonight of John Richburg, who can't be here, we had a financial issue to, uh, that we've been dealing with. And, and John is just another one of those employees, a lot like those in all those departments, that is just quiet. He's just quiet. But you know what he does? He constantly gets us the best value for the dollars that the taxpayers are spending. He spends them like they're his dollars, and that, and he holds on to them tight, and he makes sure when we get interest rates, we get the lowest interest rates, and he looks to re, refinance wherever possible. He doesn't do anything unturned that, we, that, that the citizens don't get better. Uh, Steve Cook always says he has the privilege of working for 39,000 bosses, and we all have that privilege. Because that's 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 what we get as as uh, as city workers is the fact that we get to to have a larger call we get we get a grand calling that we get to do and that's to help people live in a great place like this and help hopefully while we're here our years make it a little bit better and it's uh, it's truly a privilege to do that but it's mostly a privilege for me to get to work with all these incredible people who uh, who just want to make places make places like Cape Girardeau better so it's a privilege. I guess all I can say is that's why I, and that's why we live in Cape Girardeau. Okay. Thank you. Speaking about things going on, in communications, uh, I'll be participating in the Bike to Work uh, Day this Friday at Osage at 6 a.m. I have to be there. That seems awfully early. Well, I, I better 
can verify that. It, they told me I had to be there at 6 a.m. Oh, my goodness. So. They must have you setting up the event. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I commented during, during study session, you know, it, it, it hasn't been that long ago when we didn't have many trails or we didn't have many bike lanes. And now that we have them, and boy, when I go around, I see them used a lot. So we got to be proud of, of, of this event and, and, and work toward continual improvement, which we're doing uh, in expanding trails and, and uh, lanes. So that's Friday. And um, I, last week, um, welcomed uh, over about 150 public administrators from around the uh, around the state to their state convention here in Cape Girardeau uh, at Ray's. And as I was welcoming them, and they were really pretty crowded in there, I couldn't help but think that this was another year that they'd be in a brand new convention center out in West Cape Girardeau with a, being able to stay in a new uh, uh, Drury uh, hotel or in other, or other hotels around, around the city. Uh, and not taking anything away with, from the convention center that we have, but we're going to be able to offer more and to more conventions and to more visitors and to more uh, for Cape Girardeau. So I was proud to be able to do that. I want to remind uh, also um, next Wednesday, um, uh, May 11th, air show at the, uh, at the airport. It's a Wednesday. I've uh, got a great event lined up. You'll hear, see uh, citizens will see a lot of uh, promotion on this in the next week. But a great event coming to our city next Wednesday. Uh, and also um, this Friday at noon, I'll be participating and counsel anyone that can be there in a uh, dedication of a student sculpture at the corner of Sprig and Broadway. Um, we had this event last year, and that student sculpture has been there all year, and now we're going to have another student sculpture. This is in conjunction with uh, a Broadway Prescription Drug. They're supporting, supporting that, and another addition to our, to our sculpture program, right on that corner where that is, is so trafficked. Uh, other council communications? I'd like to uh, make mention of the seniors and law enforcement together is having the police memorial, it's annual. It's at Cape Bible Chapel, Thursday, May 5th at 6 p.m. And this is uh, in memory of the officers who have fallen uh, on their, in their duties. And uh, it gets bigger every year, which is uh, very heartening uh, that people respect uh, what our officers are doing. I'd encourage anybody that can make it to, to be there. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I had my first uh, meeting with the um, attending the uh, Keep Cape Beautiful committee and uh, Julia is, uh, serves on that group and uh, we will be out and about in the next two weeks doing a the litter inventory for each of the wards so uh, okay. that group is uh, very involved in keeping Cape Beautiful. Great. Another great effort. Anyone else? So we had a uh, obviously a honoring of the historic preservation ethic. I also want to mention a, a remarkable event that happened just a couple weeks ago, the historic preservation 35th anniversary banquet. Uh, well over 150 attendees, the Alumni Center was packed to the gills, really remarkable. Uh, the special speaker was Donovan Ripkema, who's a nationally, internationally known speaker on using historic preservation to revitalize downtowns and to promote economic development in general. And he actually got me excited about statistics, so that was a pretty remarkable event. Um, but there are, there are alumni going back to the beginning of the program, including the founder of the program, Art Mattingly, who was there. Uh, just really a dramatic evening, and, and I think graduates from almost every year since then, a real tribute to the skills and competencies they learned that they've now practiced uh, managing state parks, national parks, museums, historic sites, um, archives. So, great evening for the Historic Preservation Program. Raise money for scholarships for students at the university, and uh, and uh, we'll do it again every other year, right? Right, Dr. Hoffman. <laughs> so, great event. Yeah, I thank thank Dr. Hoffman for for his efforts there, and that, that the amazing thing to me that night, Wayne, uh, attending that and mixing with the uh, with the attendees are the number of alumni from around the nation. Somebody drove. Was it from Pennsylvania or New York? 
who was uh, an alum who didn't want to miss this event, wow. and and also Great. talked about, wow, I, I, Cape Girardeau's changed since I've been here, and uh, and then there were others that that alumni that from out of state that made the effort to come back to Cape Girardeau for this for this event. Amazing. Great. Okay. Anyone else? <coughs> Staff? I don't think we have anything further. Okay. We have two public hearings tonight. Number one, a public hearing to consider a request to rezone property on LaSalle Avenue from C2 Highway Commercial to R4 Medium Density Multifamily Residential. Public hearing is open for anyone to appear before the council. Public hearing remains open. Anyone to appear on this issue? If not, we will close that public issue. And I think we'll move on, Council, since we didn't have anyone here. Second public hearing is a public hearing to consider a proposed amendment to Section 30-105, 30-333, and 30-334 of the Code of Ordinance of City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, regarding the C1 General Commercial District and the C2 Highway Commercial District. Public hearing is open. Anyone to appear before the council on this agenda item? Seeing none, we will close that public hearing. Anyone here to appear before the council on any item that is on the agenda? Any other item is on the agenda. Okay, Greg, if you'll take us through the <coughs> consent agenda, less item seven. Missouri by establishing stop signs on Victory Lane and Wishbone Way. Bill 1674, an ordinance amending Schedule C of Section 26-121 of the Code of <coughs> Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri by establishing stop signs on the Victory Lane and Wishbone Way. Bill 1675, an ordinance authorizing the City Manager to execute a memorandum of agreement with the South e Southeast Missouri State University for the installation of fiber optic cable in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Bill 1675, an ordinance authorizing the City Manager to execute a memorandum of agreement with the Southeast Missouri State University for the installation of fiber optic cable City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Bill 1684, resolution authorizing the city manager to get a license and an agreement with the Southeast Missouri State University for installation of conduit and fiber road cable along Broadway and Pacific Street in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Bill 1685, resolution authorizing the city manager to get an agreement with Zellner Construction Inc. for the Fire Station 2 Annex Building Pre Engineer Building Package in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Council, you've heard the uh, consent agenda less item 7. If I could have a motion for approval. So moved by a gun. Second by a guard. Gun and guard. That's going to get tricky. Any discussion? I'd like my votes on uh, item six and eight to be recorded as abstention. So, clerk, no note six and eight abstention from uh, Councilman Bowen. <coughs> Any other uh, comments? Seeing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now, if you, uh, Greg, will uh, read item uh, seven. Bill 1678, ordinance authorizing the direction of issuance of sales delivery and delivery of special obligation bond series of 2016 and the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and approving certain documents authorizing certain other actions and protection of the road. Bill 1678, ordinance authorizing the direction of issuance of sales delivery of special obligation bond series of 2016 and the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and approving certain documents authorizing certain other actions and protection of the road. Okay, first, Council, we need a motion for approval of that item. So moved. So moved again. Second. And seconded by Bowen. Also, as discussed uh, at our study session, we will need an amendment uh, to that in that um, these were uh, uh, issued and the final documents prepared today. And there were uh, uh, some amended uh, items on there, uh, amended numbers on there that you have uh, received the uh, information on. So I need a motion for approval of the amended uh, item on the bonds. So moved by Fox. Second. And seconded by Guard. Any discussion? 
Those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? <coughs> now, of the amended motion, is there any other discussion? Mr. Mayor, I just want to point out that we're saving $200,000, $250,000 for this refinance, which definitely is a, is a benefit to our citizens. And also, I would, I would draw people's attention to the supporting documents. There's some really interesting uh, and positive information about yes. the growth of our city, the fiscal health of the city, employers, uh, and, and their growth as well. So it may seem uninteresting, but financial documents can actually provide you some, some uh, helpful Good information. Items. Absolutely. Good point. And these... Um, Scott will um, will take care of several items within our city. Yeah, they're for the fire and police facilities, uh, as well as the indoor sports complex. And uh, our effective rate is two point four five nine seven. Okay, that's good. And it's get that for me. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Um, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. On the new ordinance, number 10, bill number 16-81, an ordinance accepting a quick claim deed from and authorizing the mayor to execute an acceptance of conveyance for the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission for property located east of I-55 in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. First read. So moved by Gunn. Second. And seconded by Fox. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Number 11, bill number 16-82, an ordinance accepting a permanent utility easement from First State Community Bank for property located at 2527 William, the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. First read. So moved. So moved by Bowen. Second. Taken by Fox. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? And now the public hearing agenda items. Uh, uh, number 12, bill number 16-83, an ordinance amending Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinance, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by changing the zoning of property located on LaSalle Avenue east of Baldwin Drive in the city and county of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, from C2 to R4. First read. So moved by Azura. Second. Seconded by uh, Guard. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Number 13, Bill Number 16-86, an ordinance amending Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, regarding zoning districts C1 and C2. First read. So moved. so moved by Fox. Second. Seconded by Bowen. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Finally, Bill Number uh, 16-87, an ordinance authorizing city manager to execute an agreement for Professional and construction services between the city of Cape Girardeau and Penzel Construction, Inc. First read. So moved. So moved. Bowen? Second. Second at guard. Any discussion? When is they beginning? Um, I don't know if we have a... a they're beginning now because they're, they're in the process of getting uh, the, the designs worked out. So I don't know if they have a construction beginning or not. Uh, uh, Mayor and Council, it's a design build project currently in the design phase. We anticipate uh, beginning construction this fall sometime. And then at that point in time, when that re remodeled, they'll move in there and. Oh, this is this is the uh, this is Fire Station this is, Four. This is the one at Lexington and Flat. The new one. Oh, and uh, the other one, uh, they will begin, uh, that's, that is design bid build, so they'll begin construction pretty quickly, pretty quickly there, and then they'll move that. That's uh, on item number nine. Any other discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? And uh, finally, we have one appointment, appointment to Historic uh, Preservation Commission, and those, as we uh, visited at our uh, study session, are L.A. Height and Tom Grantham, if I could have a motion. So moved. so moved by uh, Gunn, Second. seconded by Bowen. Any discussion? I'll, I'll just note that Ellen Hyde is a graduate of the Southeast Historic Preservation Program. Okay. Another asset for us. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any other business to come before us? Moved to adjourn. Moved to adjourn by Gunn. <laughs> seconded by uh, Azura. You're in the seat now for the... <laughs> <laughs> Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>